So this is the forerunner of going to the moon. It is for 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 commercial. I mean for commercial. Commer yeah. yeah, commercial. And it'll be incremental. The next thing after this suborbital, which again, which is just up and down, would be the orbital. Yeah. And then you know you'd, you'd spend time maybe in like a space hotel, which which actually people are working on. Mm -hmm. And then then you just keep taking these steps. And you, you know? and you have a weightlessness for what four or five minutes? Yeah, the, it's a, for for this guy, this is about three and a half minutes of weightlessness. Mm -hmm. For for this for the actual commercial version, it'll be somewhere around the ballpark of four and a half five maybe. Yeah. But again, those numbers, it's 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 secretly being built. So and, uh, so the cabin of this thing, we're going to have to be able to be. F Floating, floating around, or we'll be strapped in. And no, you probably. Well, would you be strapped well, yeah, in? I'm sorry, I didn't mean well, to say Well, when no. you when you when you take off, you definitely strapped in because right. you have all that force. But once you get into the weightlessness environment, yeah. you'll be able to unstrap. And the the, the cabin is actually huge. I've actually been in in the cabin of the um, the carrier, which is identical to the spacecraft, and it's enormous. And then again, how many passengers? Um, it'll be six passengers and two pilots. Now, how long will we be in space? What's considered well, some of um, you, you'll, the, the weightlessness conditions will be, will be around again four and a half to five minutes, okay. and then you'll be in what they call microgravity. So it will be a little bit less than uh, it'll be th that region between you know like you're standing on Earth mm -hmm. and like you're, you're floating weightlessness. So the entire trip will take how long? Trip um, <laughs> we'll from think. from wheels from wheels on the ground to taking off to coming back down. It'll take about two and a half hours, and wow. that that is flying up, which takes yeah. about an hour to get to launch altitude. Then you you know you bl you blast off, and then you come down as a glider. I was going to say, the way it's down. built, it looks yeah. like we land like any other aircraft. Yeah, you land just like the shuttle does. The shuttle comes yeah. down right. and glides, or um, the X-15. There's a, a lot of different rocket planes. You know, the early X-planes would come yeah. down as gliders, and this does now, something is it, similar. Now, is there going to be re-entry? I mean, it, are we going to come through that zone where, where it heats up? And Yeah, that, and that's, that's actually what makes this guy so novel, is that re-entry, because that's the most dangerous part mm -hmm. of the whole thing, mm -hmm. is coming into that, coming into the, back into the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. What this thing does to, to, to do that, is the back wings fold up like this in a maneuver called feathering. And what it does is it comes in like this, comes belly first, mm -hmm. and it's so stable that even if it came, even if it was coming from space upside down, it would reorient itself by itself. And the pilot wouldn't have to do anything, so it's very, very safe. Yeah. And then it slows down so quickly, it doesn't get a chance to heat up and be ah. dangerous. Mm -hmm. It's a very ingenious way of doing it. And the new version will do the same exact thing, the, the, the one that will take passengers. Again, the, the prototype used this, what they call, it, again, that feathering maneuver. This seems like a pretty good photo op to me. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it really I mean, there's just some beautiful photos out there, for yeah. sure. And that was one of the nice things about the book, is, is that you know, it's, it, the story, I, I was able to write it, the text, but then to illustrate it, to have to marry all of mm -hmm. the different um, uh, uh, you it's know, beautiful stages. Book. It's yeah. a beautiful to, book. to marry all the different stages and the development and the parts and, and the people and to get the stories in there. The illustrations just made it all the better. So it, it's not like a coffee table book where you're just throwing in these, these photos. Mm -hmm. It really, if you didn't want to read the text at all, yeah. you could just read the photos, the captions of the photos. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the thrill of a lifetime for you, obviously. Oh, absolutely. You, uh, are you going to get the chance to maybe go up? Um, wanna... Boy, you know, so, so I wrote this, and Paul, it was Paul Allen and who was the, the, the person who financed this. So Spaceship Two is now financed by a different group. And I would love to. But again, this is a different project, so <laughs> I, I, you know, I would. I'm sure I'm low on the totem pole in terms of people who are going to go out. But uh, I have to sell a lot of books. <laughs> Put it that way. Here is devil's advocate right now. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, cost of this program. What, what, what type? What money are we looking at to launch this? To put this in place? Uh, so, so this one, soup, soup to nuts. Okay, starting from you know just drawing, twenty-five million dollars. So some of the, our tickets will pay for some of this, obviously. Um, our tickets will pay yes for, for some of the for some of the development right because when Paul Allen um, financed this twenty five million he said there are two ways to recapture my investment number one is winning the Ansari X Prize which is a ten million dollar prize right. so he got ten million dollars right mm -hmm. off the bat from from that right so he won that and then licensing it to a company like Virgin Galactic mm -hmm. who will take this the second generation and start using that technology Commercial. to bring commercially right and so my next question of course is answered itself when I ask it we say why are we doing this why are we going into space why do we want to take commercial flights there I guess would be the same answer is why did the wagon train come to California yeah 
I mean, why? Because I, yeah. I want to go to space. <laughs> Do you guys want to go to space? I think it's pioneers. <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't know if I want. I, I listen. If there was, if there was a way, I think. Arnold it would be. says I'm spacey every day. <laughs> <laughs> he says I'm out there all the time, so I don't have to buy a ticket. <laughs> but that's yeah. cheaper that way. <laughs> well, it's got to be. It's got to be the biggest thrill in the world Absolutely. to be able to lift the uh, the bonds the bounds of Earth and and, yeah. and go into space and be weightless. I think yeah. it would be terrific. Of course, it'd be who you're company with too, probably. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> who you're riding with? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, one of the things they, they um, when the astronauts were looking down, and I mean the NASA astronauts were looking down, they saw Earth and they saw this has this no boundaries, beautiful you know right. blue sphere, right. and it, I mean a very peaceful type of thing. They call that the overview effect. And I'm hoping that when this starts happening too, is you're going to have the people who are going to be able to afford this. You know, in the very initially, beginning, initially. will be you know, you know, wealthier people mm -hmm. who have some influence, hopefully. And when they start to see this, you're hoping that this will have a very, mm -hmm. you know, profound and positive impact. You know, not just on you know, on the world, you know, the, the environment, all these type of things, and in on terms of future. boundaries on our future. So, our future. now this flight, particularly that's going like this, you really won't be able to see Earth as a sphere. You will be able to see. Actually, you can. There's a photo right here. You can see oh, exactly. Well, you what, see it as a sphere. You you, you don't get that that high up, but okay. you do get to see the curvature of the Earth. So this oh, okay. this, for example, would is, be similar to what we could view from this yeah, particular yeah. flight. Oh, yeah. That is the a pilot actually took that from here. Okay. So so one of the space pilots um, on I think it was the third third space flight yeah. took that. Brian Binney. Uh, I think that's magnificent oh. enough. Oh, uh, yeah. Now when we orbit, when we have the flight that orbits mm -hmm. the Earth, then we will get that view that the astronauts got? Yeah, uh, yeah. Like, like it, when you start orbiting, you'll see something like more what you'll look at with the shuttle, space shuttle. Knowing what you know, how, how rapidly do you think that's going to happen, where we're going to be or able to orbit and maybe even bring the flights down to a more reasonable cost? Well, well the idea, I think um, Virgin Galactic definitely wants to do that. I mean, they, obviously, the ticket price is expensive. Like any new technology, cars, sure. bicycles, you know, computers trips across the computers, cell phones, mm -hmm. all that stuff is very expensive and has economy of scale, competition, all that type of stuff. Infrastructure gets built, those things will come down. Mm -hmm. Now, we're obviously in a little bit of a... Uh, economic crisis, so um, money is a little bit harder to get in terms of investing in all the different other possibilities. Right. So um, that might slow things down a little bit. The other thing is it is incremental. So before they start going orbital, mm -hmm. they have to get the suborbital thing right. They have to get, yeah. all right, this is a commercial thing where we're taking passengers every day. We've got to get that all. And keep it incredibly safe. And of keep course. it incredibly Dan, safe. Dan, uh, yeah. you're here for a speaking engagement? Yeah, I'm going to be giving some talks at uh, Emory Riddle. And uh, so I'm going to be giving a talk tomorrow uh, to the library and then one in the evening um, to, to the public. I hope everyone shows up. This is fascinating. Oh, it is. When's yeah. the first, do we know when the first flight will be or uh, anticipated? So for this next one, it, it's not quite certain yet. Um, they started to flight test the mothership. Mm -hmm. it, it just had its second flight test last week. Mm -hmm. And then they're hoping to start flight testing this this, this summer, the, the spaceship. And then, you know, maybe yep. a year, year and a half. And then we blast off. And we blast off. <laughs> <laughs> or beam up. Yeah, beam, beam up. <laughs> Dan, thank you so yeah. much for well, being so with much us. For having oh, great. Terrific Fascinating. stuff. Fascinating. Yes. Terrific stuff. When we come back, we recently had the opportunity to talk to uh, Alton Brown about Valentine's Day. You stay right there.